Welcome to the show. This is uh, the Bass Insider on uh, Bass Angler Magazine. I'm Big Ed, and I'm here today with PJ. I want to say this right, Bruggeman. That's pretty good, Bruggeman. Bruggeman, so you got okay. It. Pretty, pretty much, you got it. <laughs> I've been looking at that all day, going, "Man, I'm gonna mess this up." I know I am. <laughs> it's all right. Pretty much everybody does. You actually did pretty good on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming on today. You know, we're. Uh, uh, I, I, I saw you on the way in and I told Vince when I we interviewed him last, I said, I'm going to get that guy on the show because I got to talk to him. He looks like an interesting cat. I said, I want to hear what he's got to say about, you know, the bass world and what's going on out there, where he's fishing, uh, you know, a little bit about apex. And, uh, you know, I, I just yeah. want to talk and say, Hey man, let's, uh, let's let the world know who you are. Cause this is, uh, um, this is a new thing, this Apex deal out here, and we're going to see some guys that, you know, you're probably pretty well known in your circles and everything, but that, you know, let's 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 let the rest of the world see it too, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm I excited for all of this and these opportunities that Apex has brought for anglers like me that weren't out there that, that much, that I haven't done a lot of social media. I'm more just fished, you know? I tournament fish, right. I fun fish, I guide um i didn't do the internet thing as much i didn't advertise myself well getting apex to pick me to come up and fish at this level i've stepped up my game a little bit on setting up instagram and facebook and stuff and put myself out there to some sponsors and was able to pick them up which i don't know it always just seemed kind of far-fetched for me it was more just i love tournament fishing it wasn't about the sponsors but yeah. it's it's nice apex has given us an opportunity out here in the west that we've never had before and so has i just kind of threw myself it, out there has it kind of given you the opportunity to say that uh, maybe in the future or even now that you know what you turn this into a career being able to possibly fish yeah, for the profession definitely, definitely definitely um it's it's i mean obviously uh, I'm a ways out from being that my only career, but you know, I, I think it's achievable. It's, it's not out of the question anymore, you know, and to see, to go out and compete against anglers of this caliber and still do well, which I did well at Almanor, it, it, it gives you that confidence. It makes you feel like you can get out there and do what you need to do. I've also fished against a lot of these guys for a long time too. So yeah. Um, you, you see, you see the big names out there in apex and it, it, it it shows you that you could do it. Yeah. There's some, there's some big sticks out there, you know, and they're, they're, yeah. uh, they're definitely, it definitely gives you the opportunity to test yourself against some of the best in the West for sure. Um, yeah. you know, and tell us, you know, now, now tell us a little bit about PJ. I mean, who, what are you, you know, you're kind of in the, we can see from where you're sitting, you're kind of in the mountains, you're kind of yeah. out there. You're, I know you're, I know you're out by Clear Lake. Um, you know a little bit yeah. and, and things like that so what's your where do you fish what do you kind of do what are you known for um i was so um i live about 45 minutes outside of potter valley which is uh, about 40 minutes from clear lake itself or 30 minutes from hmm. clear lake itself so clear lake's definitely what i would consider my main body of water um i uh i also enjoy berryessa a lot I've done a lot of good at Berryessa in the tournament scene there as well. Um, I also do fish a few small lakes around here. I like Mendo and a few other small lakes we got up in the mountains here by Potter Valley yeah. that are a lot of fun. Um, so is, I, that, is, is that Pillsbury? Is that, a, is that one of those lakes up there? Yeah, Pillsbury is one of those how's, hidden how's lakes. That, we got how's that for a little bass fishing up there? Um, it's amazing it's yeah. amazing um, <laughs> i've got i got some lakes like that where i live too so it's <laughs> it's a it's a long haul to get there though i took my son on saturday and i think it took us about an hour and 15 minutes of dirt road yeah so and then the lawn tramps are going to be out of the water up there in about a week oh, they don't wow. have they don't have much for facilities up there um it's uh it's a long dirty haul on the boat man it, it's it's yeah. rough towing a nice boat up there it wasn't yeah. such a big deal when I had an old beater, but now that I got a brand new boat, it's a, uh, it's a yeah. little harder to tow it up there and justify it. But the fishing is amazing. Good spot to send some kayak guys up to. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's yeah. a great swim bait lake, man. It's a lot of fun. Wow. So, okay. 
And so you, feel like so you, you were asking th things yeah. that I'm known to do. I, I throw a lot of swim baits. Okay. Um, I also am really well at really good at fishing grass. I like to punch frog flip all of that. Um, power fishing in general is more right. my thing. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of years, so that's why kind of why I like fishing Berryessa a lot. I've gotten a lot better at finesse fishing because of mm -hmm. it. Um, I've definitely learned to incorporate that into my game, which is something I didn't have for a long time. Stepping up to the pro ams though, and seeing how bad you could get beat <laughs> by a spinning rod um, teaches you to just become more versatile. Right. You know, and, and I've that's been a main focus of mine is to learn when to put that big stuff down and pick up that spinning rod and go to work, and uh, learning how much fun it is actually too. Catching big bass on light line is a lot of fun, and it's 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 gets your heart going good, you know. Yeah. Whereas when you got when you got eighty pound braid and you're just muscling them to the boat, it's it's you know you got them, you know. Right. Right. Um, but yeah. It's definitely the, the pro-am scene in general has made me had to learn to finesse fish a lot better. Um, but in general, yeah, if I can do what I want to do, I'm going to have either 80 pound braid or 30 pound mono on my reel and I'm going to be power fishing. Nice. So. Um, now you got, you got onto the apex. Uh, were you, how did you qualify for, you qualified for that? Were you, uh, how did you, how did um, you get to the apex? I'm, I'm not sure exactly how they decided <laughs> to choose me for Apex. Um, I have fished a lot of the Wild West pro, pro Amps. Up until this year, I've fished pretty much every Wild West Pro Am and team event. Okay. This year, once they picked me for Apex, I've got two young kids that aren't so young anymore. So <laughs> trying to spend more time with them, I kind of just focused on Apex. Okay. And that's that's the only thing I'm doing everything of. Otherwise, I'm just I fished the Cal Open. I'll, I fished a few of their team events and a couple pro amps, but I'm gonna just cherry pick my way through it to have more yeah. time at home this year. That and Apex is just my main focus. Yeah. So you get well, and you you've got you're locked in there for two years, I think, and uh, yeah. So you got to make sure that on that second year, you're pretty much up there towards the top, so you don't get bumped down and let somebody else come up. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, and yeah. I'm off to a good start already. So I, I got to got to fish on day three at Almanor. So just want to hey, keep that rolling. I'll tell you what, you know, we, we talked a little earlier um, just to kind of prep up a little bit. And, you know, you told me you'd never been to Almanor. Uh, you're talking never. about all of it. None, none of the lakes that you've talked about so far have any kind of smallmouth except for Berryessa. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I guess Clear Lake does, but just not, it's not, you those are two them. not smallmouth lakes normally. And now yeah. you're on a pure smallmouth lake. There's largemouth in there too, but it's a, um, it is a pure smallmouth lake, crystal clear water for the most part. And how was that just, you know, hey, first, first of all, you started off Friday with, decent weather you know somewhat nice and you know yeah. calm saturday you go up there and it just starts blowing and then sunday you're fishing in the snow so you get you get the i mean you get welcome to the mountains everybody this is what it's like thanks for yeah. coming you I mean, know I'm, how, how I'm was that the weather changing like that <laughs> I'm yeah. used to the weather changing like that being where I live, but I was not ready for snow. Um, I was able to adjust. Uh, oops. Oh, sorry about that. I was able to adjust both days, for first two days. You know, when we got there, the first day I started lighting up the score tracker pretty quick and I saw that nobody else was. And that's something that makes it interesting too, as you can see what other guys were doing too. And I knew that like, I wasn't catching big fish, but nobody was really catching a lot of fish. So I just went with it. Right. You know, I know that a lot of fish counts too, to get you into day three. So I was able to get on a little flurry, a rip bait fish. I just started ripping right away. I didn't know what else to do with that clear water. I've done good at Havasu on smallmouth ripping. And so that's just kind of what I ran with, even though the conditions didn't call for it. You know, I know those smallmouth are they're angry fish. They don't need the wind. They'll, <laughs> they'll eat in that hot, clear, dry sun, you know? Yeah. So they, I, I was able to figure something out quick. I got lucky, you know, I picked the right thing at the right time and it worked. And then going into day two, I knew with the wind picking up, it would just get better. And it did. It yeah. was lights out for me day two. It was fun. So how many, how many it, fish did you actually end up catching um, to get you into day three? 
Do you um, I don't remember exactly. I know I had somewhere around 10 or 11 or no, I had like 12 keepers that they counted on day one. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a little problem with getting my tourney X submissions right at first. I wasn't <laughs> shutting the mouth all the way and stuff like that. That's all new stuff. And those little small mouth, man, they just, they're so angry. You try to hold them there and hold the mouth shut, but you can't have your hand on his head. So yeah. they just start flopping. It was, it was interesting to get used to that. Um, I had about 12 keepers the first day though. On the second day, I think I had something like 22 keepers or something like that though. So I just ran through them on the second day. It was yeah. one after another. They were chewing the rip bait. Um, I, I even lost a few fish that would have helped me weight wise. I did qualify for weight as well. I ended up fourth in weight too. So oh, I there you go. So you double qualified. I double qualified. Yeah. Nice. So, so that was cool, um, man. It felt good. So now, um, what what rip bait? What rip bait were you throwing up there? I was throwing the Vision One Ten and okay. uh and a re stain reaction pattern it's like a bone pattern that, okay. on the first day and then about i don't know about 10 or 11 o'clock on day two and throughout the day on day one i moved up to a vision 110 plus one i got i had to go mm. a little deeper in the later part of the day um same color pattern now day two i was throwing that same bait and got my limit pretty quick, but I thought I just had to change something up to get a bigger bite. And I did. I changed to a Wakasa Wakasagi color, same rip okay. bait. Yeah. Um, it's one that I got a lot of faith in, period, anywhere, any kind of bass. So I picked that up and threw it out. And it, I just started sticking big one after big one. And they, you could tell it was the right color. They were choking the bait rather than having it cross face and stuff like that. It was all the way down their throat. Scary choking it a lot of yeah. times. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, you know, next you now you've really got another you know this is this is i think where apex is really going to shine this year for me to see is that uh now you've got to go to another lake that you're really familiar with you know I've, i know that you've been there a lot and you just always catch them when you go but that lake amador right you've been there a ton right yeah. <laughs> no i've never been there <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty much that's pretty much what everybody keeps saying you know the same thing nobody's been there we yeah. don't know what to do what to expect so um i think this yeah, for me I, I really enjoy it I, I think that's great that you guys you know you, there's a bunch of lakes that hey you're going to be at a professional level you're going to be the top out here in the west let's test it and see how good you get i see how good yeah, you guys really no, do it, so what do you think it makes it a lot of fun it makes it a lot of fun and also it takes a lot of stress out of it man pre-fishing can be really stressful sometimes especially if you're not figuring it out you know and so to be able to just go out there and know that everybody's at zero everybody yeah. knows knows nothing they have, no one's been there for at least a month the few people that have local knowledge on these bodies of water they'll definitely have a one up yeah because you know like i mean when we got to almanor and we're giving our half hour drive around i didn't realize how big the lake was I was thinking when you look at it on a map, it looks like a pond, man. And yep. so I was thinking, oh, cool, a half hour, I'll run around the whole lake and I'll be able to see everything I need to see. Now I, I got there and half hour wasn't enough time to run around one side of that lake, you know, but, uh, and I actually, I spent my whole half hour drive around running around the north side of the lake up there mm. at Almanor and it was really shallow. And I, I could tell that it's probably a spot where most of the bigger fish live but they were going to be hard to find, you yeah. know, they, it was going to be hard to locate where they were without putting in time out there. And we didn't have that kind of time. so I just went for, I ran to the steeper, deeper side of the lake where I knew you'd be able to present yourself to more fish in a smaller area and just kind of went with that on it. So I, I went out and fished day one, not having ever seen anything. I just took off with not knowing where I was headed, just headed to that side of the lake because it looked deeper and pick the first good thing i drove by you know right so that's 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 interesting in a tournament that's 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 a hard call to make you know and you start questioning yourself about 30 seconds into the first cast you know but <laughs> uh yeah right up to you i know that going to <clears throat> i i know that going to amador next is going to be the same thing too but at least they're green bass like I, yeah. I i feel more confident with large mouth um i know it's a big trout area so there got to be trout eaters there i'm definitely going to go for that you know 
that's just yeah. kind of <laughs> I'm going to try to push my strong points there. There's that's, that's going to be my chance to do something like that. So the time of year, I mean, you catch a couple of good ones and go work for the rest. <laughs> yeah. It should, it should be a very interesting tournament up there. I mean, like you said, getting back to kind of what you, what you feel like your strengths are with largemouth and, uh, get, figuring out a little bit more about, you know, a lake again, not a, not a huge lake, not a, su not a super small lake, but not a huge lake either. So yeah. that, uh, that's going to be interesting. And it, it's, it's, and that's, you know, and that really plays into that 30 boat field or 32 or whatever it is boat field. So, um, yeah, that's, it's a blessing right now to be fishing the small field and not having, being able to go fish these small lakes and not have us all stacked on top of each other, right. you know? One thing with Apex too is I've noticed even from day one, it's a it's a lot more respectable group. You know, you're dealing with guys that got a lot of respect for each other, so it's been nice. It's it's a nice change. Now, um, kind of leading on to that with uh, with the way that you know with the way that these these are set up, how how do you how did you feel about the whole you know hey at, at day two. You know, you're sitting there, you got this weight, and then all of a sudden day three comes along, they cut it off, and you're back to zero. Um, now, are you a guy that kind of le – yeah, you got a, a guy that, that likes that scenario or doesn't like that scenario? I mean, it is the scenario, and I'm okay with it. Um, no, I'd rather all three days count for me. <laughs> But because uh, it, it hurt me bad at Almanor, I mean, I, yeah. I would have actually ended up like third or fourth for my total weight. So, I mean, it, it definitely cost me, cost me there, but it's also cool though, too. It, it, it levels the playing field and it makes day three a whole new ball game. So it, it is, it's exciting for sure. Yeah. yeah. At, Almanor, at Almanor, I wish I would have got all three days weight, but that's only because it would have helped me. You know, I'm sure there'll come a right. time where I need to make it because of keepers and do so and <laughs> end up winning the tournament, you know, I so. I was just going to ask that. I mean, you know, if you were sitting in that same boat and instead of qual double qualifying, if you'd only qualified with numbers, I'll, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, go I'm, ahead go ahead and zero those out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's interesting. It's cool. It, it levels the playing field a lot and it makes, it makes it to where you're never out of the ball game. Even if you can't figure out how to catch big ones, just go pound them out as long as they're keepers you know so um and a lot of times new bodies of water and stuff for us that's going to make it that's going to make it helpful trying to make it to day three sometimes i'm sure so so now not definitely know. not not my plan ever though initially yeah. i want to make it by weight yeah you know yeah, yeah but there are, there's going to come times that, you know especially when you're, you're looking at lakes and you're just not figuring them out. I mean, we've all been there where it says, yeah. I'm just not figuring out. I can catch two pounders. I just can't catch that four or five, you know, to go with it. So, um, you know, Clear Lake can Clear Lake. I mean, you know, the a lake that you pretty much probably consider yeah. one of your home lakes, yeah. you know, that's a lake that you can do that on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Clear, Clear Lake will definitely, you can get stuck on those two pounders there easy, but that's, that's something that sometimes it's hard to find that bigger bite there. As good as it is, it can really humble yeah. you at times. I've had it, I've had it humble me for sure. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, are you now, are you going out to the, wow, the team out, the team event up there in a couple weeks? I wild, think wild so. West. I'm waiting to hear back from my team partner, but that is my intention. Um, but yeah, so, you know, going into Clear Lake up there, um, you know, this time of year is, is probably, uh, it's that it's finally post spawn up there. I've been fishing up there a lot and pre spawn and uh, I just haven't been doing great, but the, uh, you know, now it's post spawn and you know, what are we, what are we kind of looking at for, you know, up in Clear Lake right now for post spawn fish? I mean, what is your, you talked about oh. your power fishing and, and swim bait fishing, but I'm not imagining that's a great time of year to swim bait fish up there. No, no, definitely not a great time of year for swim bait fishing. But uh, the one thing that's hard for me with Clear Lake right now is the low water levels. Yeah. Um, you usually can't find me this time of year cause I'm buried in a Creek somewhere, you know, flipping <laughs> and frogging. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's tough to do that right now there's i mean there's a little bit of water and cash and rodman but you're not really 
if a couple of guys go in there, it's not worth it in the tournament. So yeah, you're going to kick up a it, lot of mud in there right now. Yeah. And good luck. Be safe getting in there if you try it too. So yeah. it's, it's not, it's not fishing to what Clear Lake normally does right now. It's going to be a weird post spawn for sure. Um, I don't know. My main thing is going to be more the rocks than rather, rather than trying to fish that as much, you know, I'll definitely get up and try it especially in the hot part of the day, but right. I'm sure the rocks are going to be a lot easier to target fish this time of year. Instead, you know, get in that deeper water and try to find those big post spawn females. Yeah. You know. So now are you, are you, are you more of a, you know, with the big swim baits, are you more, you like the winter time stuff? You like the, yeah, you, know, you got, to, you got mean, to fish Shasta a little bit this year. You got to throw some big, I'm guessing you threw some swim baits up there and yeah, I mean, more my style is definitely from November to February is my time of year for bass fishing, um, for swim bait fishing with the right. big baits. Um, you got you got much better chance of getting bit that time of year. I mean, not to say that I won't pull them out in the summer, you know. Right. When I find fish in the summer on deep rock piles, depending on where I'm at, what body of water, I'll still mm -hmm. give it a whirl, you know. Um, I got a lot of faith in them, you know, even if you're not going to, if, if things are tough, I like to just go with what I got faith in, knowing that if I do hook one, it's going to be worth it. Um, yeah. uh, I do yeah. definitely, I spend a lot of time just slow rolling a swim bait all winter, though. That's pretty much mostly what I'm doing. If I'm not throwing a swim bait, I'm throwing a trap in the winter. Yeah, and okay. That's, that's pretty much how I roll. So then now you also talked about, you know, you like the punching and stuff. So I'm guessing you hit the delta quite a bit and um, get yeah, down, get down there. I've been trying to figure the delta out. The tides down there seem to really kick my ass. I'm able to figure <laughs> stuff out. I right. can figure stuff out and just can't replicate it. You know, that's been my problem. A pre fish hero down there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know that feeling. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it. The delta has always been really tough. I mean, I have a lot of fun there, though. It is definitely a fish is to my strong points. Um, and I'm, I plan to spend a lot more time down there, especially with Clear Lake being as low as it is. I'll be down there a lot this summer. Yeah. yeah. I think this year that lake, that, that body of water has probably got beat up more is, is probably going to be one of the most hit on lakes between COVID and the low water. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, a lot of, a lot of tournament circuits are changing their TOCs to there and their championships yep. to there. And yep. it's just coming down to there's no water anywhere else. So you better go where there's water. Cause exactly. like you say, you know, little lakes, like what you were talking about, Pillsbury and things like that, even clear Lake, you know, they talked about for a while. I know they talked about closing it, but now we've got, you know, now they're just going to close off a couple of the ramps that are getting low, but it's um, I've been in the keys a couple times now and I've had, you know, some of my YouTube videos and things, guys can see me in the, in there and you're kicking up mud in the middle of that channel. I mean, it's just, yeah. it is shallow. Yeah. And uh, like you say, Clear Lake's a little dangerous out there too. So yeah, a lot so of guys what, don't understand how many rocks there are on the north end of the lake too. It, it's it's giving away a lot of the good spots being this low, that's for sure. But uh, hopefully, guys yeah. find them with the trolling motor and not with the big motor. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, there there there's definitely a chance out there to hit them with a the big motor too. So, yeah. well, why don't you uh, so why don't you tell me a little bit about some of your sponsors? You know, you you said you picked up some sponsors this year and. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about some of your sponsors that you uh, that you were able to. Yeah, so I was I was fortunate enough to get a deal with Bass Cat and Boatmasters and Toxic Baits. Oh. Um, I just kind of put myself out there to them, and they said yes. So I mean, it's it's been cool. <laughs> I was surprised, you know. I've never really done anything like this. I, I my my I know that a lot of the sponsors really want you to have a good media forum to show right. you know your followers on your instagram and facebook and stuff like that and i really didn't even have one when i went to go set all this up so like that that was something that definitely made it harder for me and so but these guys were fortunate i was fortunate enough that these guys wanted to work with me and wanted to see me grow as a fisherman and i couldn't do it without their support and what's awesome is everybody i did get picked up by is stuff that i do use and believed in already and would be using anyways so right it's awesome. it's it's fortunate yeah how uh, how you like that bass cat i love my bass cat 
I, yeah. I've been a Bass Cat owner for a long time now, and I, I couldn't imagine owning anything else. I've had a couple other boats and just the ride, man. It's, it's, it's intense. What you, especially what being, able to, being able to just fly by guys too. It's, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. What, what are you running? What are you running right now? I have a 2020 Cougar with Mercury on the back, Mercury 250 on the back. Nice. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I really like the Cougar a lot. I had an Ira before that, a 2019 Ira. And before that, I had a Cougar, a 2002 Cougar that I had for a long time. Um, I like the Cougar better personally for tournament fishing. It's got a little bit more room. Um, the Ira is a whole lot of fun to drive, though, man. I, I, I definitely enjoyed that. Quick little it's boat. Like a, it's like a Corvette, man. Yeah. It's or a Porsche, man. You're out there. You can carve. You can turn. You can get up to top speed and throw your buddy's head back. It's it's fun. That's awesome. Um, yeah, with it, you know, you talk about it's a little tough right now to get, uh, you know, to go out there when you if you don't have a social media presence. So what do you what do you kind of suggest to guys going out there right now that are looking, you know, to get get something or work on these sponsors you know there's plenty of guys now that with this apex being out here that are be you know man i gotta get on the ball i gotta get on this thing i want to i want to fish out west i want to stay out west and be a pro out west and you know this is definitely a great opportunity for that what do you you know what do you kind of suggest to everybody get out there that wants to get in this thing start advertising yourself today you know just posting pictures of fish even if you're not catching fish just posting pictures of you out there fishing it's it's anything to draw attention to yourself and start building a fan base you know and and take the time out from fishing to build yourself as a fisherman basically and right. that's something i never wanted to do if i had any free time i just wanted to be fishing not not posting pictures or taking pictures. I didn't even take a lot of pictures throughout the years. Um, uh, I just, uh, it was just for fun. It wasn't, I wasn't worried about remembering it because I was going to go do it again tomorrow anyways. And, <laughs> but yeah, I'd say that building yourself so that these sponsors do want to take a look at you and figuring out who you'd like to have represent you and start supporting them anyways, even before they've supported you. Show them that you're worth it, you know? Yeah. get out there and and show off the products you're using you know and show people what's going on it's 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 the best way like i mean the sponsors don't need you unless you're going to help them make money they don't want to give you money if you're not going to help them make money and that's important and you can understand why money's hard to come by these days it's uh with the economy as yeah. hard as it bad as it is it's definitely harder to get people to want to shell out money but uh, the apex thing makes it really nice because you are able to reach out and say that, you know, this is, this is something bigger, right. you know, and I will be able to showcase your product on something bigger and uh, hopefully it continues to grow and continues to draw fans the way it has. It already has had a really, I feel like it's done really well um, to even have gained any kind of traction in the industry already like they have is a miracle, you know, we're two tournaments in so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two, two, two tournaments in and it and they, yeah it's been getting a lot of draw getting a lot of yeah. you know looks and um you know i like to see you know i don't you don't appear to be a too old of a fella um you said you yeah. got a couple younger kids but what how old are you i'm 35 35 so yeah i mean you're still you know that's still God, 35 um <laughs> <laughs> that's still you know that's still really young for you know yeah. this business too and uh especially when you see some of the guys that are out there fishing and, and uh, you know, this is going to be, this, this is such a great opportunity for for the younger guys coming in, even, you know, guys in their twenties and coming out of high school, coming out of college, coming out, you know, I, I know you probably had the same thing. I don't know, you know, coming out of high school or anything, but to have the opportunities that they have now is pretty impressive. And to, it's, uh, it's huge. It's huge. I wish I would have been more into it at that age and had something to do in that that at that age i That's didn't it. really even get into tournament fishing until i was 23 years old 24 yeah. so i uh i i didn't get into it as young i did grow up i grew up fishing i've always been right. fishing my father did tournament fish and so does mm -hmm. my uncle but i just never really got that heavy into it am i until i got a little older 
and decided that's what I wanted to do. I went and got talked into fishing a tournament. We won a tournament and I looked at my brother because my brother had talked me into doing it. And I told him, I'm going to do this for a living. And he told me <laughs> I was crazy. He told me we just got lucky and won a tournament. But uh, I've, I've since then, I've always just pushed to try to push it as far as I can. So I love so that- the competition. I want to bring home that that cup that's what i want it's 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 that's the most driving factor for me so yeah, yeah I, i've had uh you Those know vince, some awesome trophies i was say vince said the same vince Hurtado said the same thing he goes you know i seen that trophy and that thing made me it gave me the wants you know yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and i've heard that a couple times now so it's uh it's pretty impressive that now you got a couple kids coming up and uh you get a, they interested, they're going to be out there with you and oh, come yeah. up in it. They're they, both my son and my daughter love to fish. Um, I'm sure it's in their cards. Uh, they're both serious about it. My son actually caught his first swim bait fish on Saturday. Nice. And he, he was pumped and he threw it all day. He, he only got four fish, but he still he threw it all day. He's only nine too. So to sit there and watch him chuck and wind all day. It was impressive. It's nice. And how, how old did you say he was? He's only nine. Oh, I'm only nine years old. Nice. Yeah. 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 My kid, my kids are, you're almost your age. So <laughs> <laughs> 32 and 30. So yeah, I'm there right there. But we just, we just spent the weekend ourselves out there fishing and catching stuff. So it was really fun. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, this is kind of, you know, this is kind of what I wanted to come on just kind of talked a little bit about that and, you know, Here's the guy, you know, you know, everybody came out there and it's like, Hey, and everybody's going to ask the same question. The only, who's the guy with the dreads, you know, yeah, I mean, you, yeah. that's, you know, you don't have to stand out much more than that. You, <laughs> you stood out pretty quick, pretty easy right there. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I, I've definitely stood out in all every tournament for a long time. So <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was, uh, Vince was talking about, there's a couple, uh, medical places coming on and, and they're sponsoring different boats and different people and i'm sure everybody was looking at your boat going i know who's sponsored right uh no nope, you didn't got that me, one <laughs> it wasn't me it wasn't, me. It, it wasn't yeah. you i know right but uh, uh yeah there's but, so many uh, there's i mean there's great things out there so it was but yeah you stood out pretty good that way awesome yeah so no, I, it's, I, mean, I enjoy it it's fun it's fun it's nice to be a little different out there show people oh yeah can do it. <laughs> oh yeah that's that's kind of i think that's one of the, the the real interesting parts is that you know this isn't just for the clean cut you know guy out on the this is everybody's game you yeah. know everybody and anybody i i you know out here on the west coast i know we don't see any lady anglers in the apex right now but I can't imagine the way that they're coming out right now and fishing hard and fishing, you know, yeah. th- I can't imagine soon there won't be somebody's going to step up yeah. and make that jump and make that leap. Cause they're, it's impressive. Yeah. Um, but to see, you know, people of all walks, styles, everything coming out. This is what's yeah. so great about our sport, you know, is that yeah. it is, it is all inclusive, you know, nobody's, yeah. nobody's kicked out for nothing no it's a great group of guys we're fortunate you know and especially within apex and just the bass fishing community in general is for the most part it's mostly good guys man and we're all pretty tight and we try to take care of each other and that's it's awesome the camaraderie is awesome especially to step out then and compete and still keep it respectable and do all that and be friends at the end of the day you know it's it's a lot of fun yeah, I mean that's um, that's probably one of the things that was. Uh, I think when a couple of the other guys I talked to, they said, you know, it's kind of something that almost was missing out here in the West Coast a little bit is that camaraderie again with the pros and everybody kind of having a little bit of the egos. And they said that going into the apex, it just it seemed to just wash it all away. It was just yeah. a bunch of guys out there fishing against one another again you know, having the barbecues, having the, you know, having the time together, meeting everybody, getting to know, you know, people that you didn't know. Um, it's what I'm trying to facilitate here too, is, Hey, let's get, let's meet these guys. Let's see who they are. Let's see what's, you know, what's going on and what they're about. Um, yeah. A lot of guys, you know, didn't know how, how people got there or why they're there or, you know, but you're a guy who's been fishing for a little while now. You've been doing well. You've been catching a lot of good fish, and you caught the eye of some people, and they said, "Hey, let's get you on here and 
you know, that's amazing. And then it's awesome that, you know, anybody can come up from that. They don't have to be, no one's judging you for who, you know, just uh, being yeah. you yeah. On the, out there, you know, that's, that's the most, that's the most impressive part. So, yeah, no, it's great. But, uh, okay. Well, PJ, I want to thank you very much, man, uh, for coming on and just letting us know who you are, man. And, and what's going awesome. on out there. Uh, good luck at Amador. I hope you, you know, you go out. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, we're always trying to get the, the, you know, the winner on the, on the show. So, Hopefully we get to well, do the interview with you. And just yeah, hopefully. That big I'm trophy up. So. <laughs> so, yeah, go out there, have a good time. And, uh, and uh, again, thanks for coming on. We're, I really appreciate it. Bass Angler Magazine, we appreciate it here. And uh, we'll see you on the water again, and we'll see you out there. So thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. We appreciate you guys doing this for us, too. No problem. So that's where we'll sign off today. And we will uh, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for you know, uh, coming on to Bass Angler Magazine. I hope you enjoy this. If you did, hit that subscribe button, like, and share it with everybody so that we can keep getting these guys out here. We can keep getting new guys all across the country. We're going to have every interview I can get, I'm going to get and get you guys uh, clued into the whole everything on West Coast, East Coast. It doesn't matter. Bass fishing is bass fishing, and we're going to talk about it. So thanks for tuning in to Bass Insider, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>